these are ordinary people, by the way, shouting this. Uh, grandmother, 60 years old, teenagers, men, women, ordinary people, not just some right-wing nuts. Just crazy with hatred. I was there Sunday, and I was also there the Saturday before. And I threw rocks because I feel these people were really looking for trouble. I feel as if the tension is greater now than it was last week. I mean, uh, that's the topic of conversation wherever you go. And, and even on the buses and in the beauty parlors and in the stores, that's all you hear talked about is that ride of last Sunday. Pickard of Shrub Oak. I don't believe, I know that people are hot now and that things are tense and so on and the, there's a lot of talk and all that, but I believe this will all die down and that it has left no mark on Peekskill. Peekskill will carry on as it always has. In 1949, I was asked to sing a few songs as opener for a concert by the man I think of as one of the most extraordinary men of the 20th century, Paul Robeson. He had traveled the world around singing against fascism and singing against Jim Crow and segregation. And in 1949, the powers that be must have decided they'd put up with him long enough. And the concert was attacked, actually, by the Ku Klux Klan. They had members in the police force. They had the whole concert area surrounded with walkie-talkies, and 10,000 people had stones thrown at them. It was a rather horrifying afternoon. I had friends who said, Pete, this is just the beginning of... of uh, the fascist types taking over America. I said, it couldn't happen. Oh, yes, it couldn't. Look at those signs. It says, wake up, America. Peekskill did. Those are the exact signs that went through Germany after Kristallnacht. Wake up, Germany. Munich did, or wherever the city was. Well, it, I still felt that they didn't have to be right. And I was building this little log cabin to live in that very summer. And so it proves I was right. The signs came down, and people in Peekskill actually became ashamed of what happened in 1949. As the truth gradually filtered out, it was a small group of Ku Klux Klan people that had masterminded the whole thing. Why'd they do that? Well, they hated Robeson, a black man, and... Uh, a friend of communists, and I think they decided that, uh, that uh, the way to take care of them was to uh, take the law into your own hands. I suppose like the militia out in Montana. My name was Laura Nadell. I had roots with the Nadell family who had a home in Peekskill. And as a leader in the Communist Party, I was very much involved with Anna Boatwright, who brought to our midst 
Paul Robeson. And he came to her home one night and it was talking about what we could do. He was publishing a little newspaper called Freedom. And he was giving us all kinds of avenues, how to solve some of our problems, how to unite as a community. It was there that I met Anna Boatwright. And Paul Robeson sat in a chair in her parlor and for a year, nobody else could sit in that parlor on that seat. <laughs> it was an honored seat. So we have our roots with Paul Robeson. And Paul Robeson became a family name, a family friend, and we fought with him subsequently in Peekskill. When I was growing up, there was very little discrimination. The only element of discrimination I found once when a, a group of young men, also Hungarian boys, at the hat shop invited me to become a caddy at the Hollowbrook Country Club. And I went out there and the man who uh, was in charge of caddies said, we, we don't take uh, Jewish uh, caddies. Hmm. And I might say when I graduated from high school, I had no idea of going to uh, college then. I had no funds. So I went to what the old, old Peekskill Lighting and Railroad, which is now part of the Westchester Lighting Company. And the gentleman there, who later became my friend, took my application. And I thought it was wonderful to see these men walk and work in the back of the trucks. And, and they said they had a pension. In those days, a pension was regarded as a very unique thing. And I applied for a job, and we filled out my age. And they said, you know, what is religion? I put it down. He said, I'm sorry, we can't hire Jewish people in this company. And from there, I went, got a few bucks together and went to most of my friends went away to school, but I went to NYU downtown. I went commuter by train and, uh, for six and a half years. And became a lawyer. I became a lawyer by virtue by virtue of the fact that you you could not very well uh, get a job in the white collar area in Peekskill. Even to this day, you will find there's substantial uh, subtle discrimination. The banks do not have Jewish. Uh, directors over the years. I was, I think, one of the first Jewish directors of Westchester County National Bank. I grew up in the Bronx, and uh, mm -hmm. between the ages of, I think what first influenced my politics and my feelings, which relate to the Pig School riots, was that when I attended Hebrew school in the Bronx, I would uh, typically be beaten up coming from Hebrew school because I was Jewish. This was during the Depression, and Jews were the reason for the Depression, uh, according to some people in the neighborhoods. So I grew up in an environment where uh, not only was I a, a Christ killer, but I was a, a terrible thing called a Jew. Uh, so I knew what it was like to be a scapegoat. And then uh, in Peekskill, I noticed the same type of anti-Semitism, and I noticed that whenever you had anti-Semitism, you always had its twin brother, which was racism. What changed in 49 is that the Cold War heated up enormously after Truman's election in 1948. In effect, Truman ran on a progressive, not just liberal, but progressive domestic policy. He stole the Progressive Party's domestic program. I mean, I remember him coming up to Harlem and making a speech that sounded like Jesse Jackson in 1948 campaign. I mean, from and it made it all the more impressive because here's a guy from Missouri talking like Jesse Jackson on both racial and economic issues. At the same time, as soon as he was elected, he did, for example, um, do FEPC. He did desegregate the armed forces domestically, followed through on his campaign promises in that area, but veered sharply to the right in foreign policy, even from where he was. Very much anti-communist, very much witch hunt. He was determined to beat the Republicans to the witch hunt. The thing that he did not do, follow up on in domestic policy, is uh, and lynching in the South, that is, 
really bring, quote, law and order in the proper sense to the South. So on those two counts, Cold War abroad and refusal to end lynching in the South, Dan, in effect, took on the system in 1949 specifically. Uh, I think the most significant speech he made was in Europe, where he opposed American foreign policy up and down Europe while doing a very successful concert tour. But uh, he went to the Paris Peace Conference, and although he was misquoted, certainly, and it was blown up by the media as a, quote, treasonous speech, which it was not, but he, the, th the thought was it would be unthinkable to him, Paul Robeson, that American Negroes could go to war against the Soviet Union, who in one generation had raised colored people to full human dignity. Well, that was retranslated by an AP dispatch to say, Paul Robeson says that uh, American Negroes will not defend their country in a war against the Soviet Union. Uh, so he came back in June from his European tour to the charges of communist traitor mm -hmm. to the country. And Mother. so he, it was a tremendous furor, and he did not, he could have said, well, I was totally misquoted and say that. His judgment was it was already too late. They would have got him anyway. So he took the attitude, since the American system, government in particular, and the right wing and so on, has raised this issue, should the blacks go to war against the Soviet Union, he, in effect, repeated the substance of it. No, it would not be in the interests of African Americans, of Negroes, to fight for those who have oppressed them for generations against the Soviet Union, against China, or against anybody. Of course, if we're attacked, that's something else again. But to join in a crusade against communism or any other ism, it's not in the interest of Negroes to do that. So that, that statement sort of put down the gauntlet to the right wing. And he knew when he said that, that he would probably be assassinated. He did it with full knowledge of what the consequences could be. Sponsors of the Paul Robeson concert to be held this evening in Peekskill have protested to the county executive and to the district attorney because the Peekskill Evening Star has told its readers in plain language, on the front page, just exactly the kind of man Robeson is and just who are his political sponsors. Those who protest this frank newspaper treatment are always the first to cry aloud for the right of free speech when they think their own civil rights imperiled. In fact, it is not at all unusual that minorities who are the most vehement in demand of their own rights are the most intolerant in granting similar privileges to the majority. But perhaps we are being a bit uncharitable. Maybe the situation with regard to the Robeson concert is that the tickets haven't been selling any too well, and a little publicity is considered desirable. Dear Sir, Paul Robeson and his followers are due to appear here August 27th. It is unfortunate that some of the weaker-minded among us may be susceptible to their fallacious teachings unless something is done by the loyal Americans in this area. The irony of this meeting is that they intend to appear at Lakeland Acres Picnic Area, directly across from Hillside and Assumption Cemeteries. Yes, directly across the street from the resting place of those men who paid the supreme sacrifice in order to ensure our democratic form of government. If we have not forgotten the war, let us cooperate with the American Legion and similar veterans organizations and vehemently oppose their appearance. Let us leave no doubt in their mind that they are unwelcome around here, either now or in the future. So far, no action has been taken by organizations or individuals about this rally, but I trust that it will be acted upon by the proper authorities. Sincerely, Vincent Boyle. Dear Sir, when I was approached a year ago by the committee for permission to hold the Robeson concert on my property, I had no doubt that the affair was sponsored by communist affiliation. It was a demonstration of my firm belief 
and the importance of maintaining free speech and the right of orderly assembly that I grant you permission and would do so again in a similar situation. Cognizant that if the situation were reversed, a communist would not grant a similar privilege. Yours truly, Chester Rick. When my father comes back to Harlem and all of Harlem turned out at the Golden Gate Ballroom, this is between the peak skills, and they called the tactical police, the every kind of police, the 2,000 police floating around there. At the end of the meeting, 15,000 black folks go out of the avenue and just float down the street. They just float around the police, just push the horses and everything else up on the side. Quiet, orderly. Some guy says, the police commander comes running up, you don't have a permit. We don't need a permit. Who's in charge? Ain't nobody in charge. And we get going. <laughs> Not a policeman was jostled. I mean, they just float around. Him. No epithets, no nothing. <laughs> Grandmotherly lady walking by a young policeman, you know, the fuzz out of she pressed up against the wall, scared to death, looks up at the kid and says, that's all right, son. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. But don't let nothing happen to Paul Robeson. <laughs> Through friends, I heard that there had been a riot. Someone told me that uh, crosses had been burned, uh, as a, that the Ku Klux Klan was there, which I found hard to believe because I never heard of any Klan in the area. But that they were blamed for lighting these crosses. I heard from others that it was just a gang of youngsters that did that mm -hmm. because Robeson was black and they did that to supposedly to frighten him and his followers, many of whom were black also. So then subsequently we heard that there was going to be a, another concert to be held at the old Hollowbrook Golf Course. Meanwhile, I went back to work. I worked in a retail establishment in Manhattan that uh, and uh, that was just recently organized by the Retail, Wholesale, and Warehouse Unions, Union, uh, Warehouse Workers Union, Local 65. We were called to a special meeting one evening. At this meeting, which was, uh, I don't remember, there were hundreds of members uh, attending, and David Livingstone, the president of the union, had called a meeting. He mentioned the fact that there was going to be another concert that they needed guards to protect Robeson and the other participants at, the, um, at this concert. And he got volunteers from the union. Sometime after the meeting, and I wasn't privy to this, the, the guards that were recruited were provided with bats and clubs to use as protection as weapons to protect themselves and or the concert goers. I refused to participate in this recruitment of concert guards because I had no use for Paul Robeson in light of his, uh, his uh, communist background, uh, living in Europe, eventually getting the Stalin Peace Prize by Stalin in 1954, and uh, he was an anti-American. So I wanted to leave the room, but wasn't allowed to because Livingstone had posted guards at all the exits. If you wanted to go to the men's room there at this union hall, you had to surrender your wallet in order to ensure that you'd return to the meeting. Dear sir, I am a veteran also. As such, I believe that I have as much right to speak out against this proposed rallying as any of my ex-buddies. I feel that we have been misguided. The veterans of this area have been incited by a handful of overzealous individuals. As for Mr. Robeson, I have the utmost admiration for his musical, athletic, and scholastic accomplishments. I may not be in accord with his approach to achieving the brotherhood of all mankind, but we owe him the tolerance of his beliefs and to ourselves 
we owe the self-respect and decency of allowing him to speak and be heard by any and all who so desire. Sincerely, Arthur Reich. You have to remember, uh, at that time, uh, there was a lot of anti-communist feeling in the whole area, especially among veterans groups. The theme of the opposition in Peekskill was, um, uh, wake up America, Peekskill did. Mm -hmm. And in fact, ma many of the local people had the signs in their windows, in their windshields of their cars that, s that said that, wake up America, Peekskill did. This whole area of uh, Lake Peekskill, Putnam Valley, Lake Mohegan, had many communist sympathizers. When I drove my car through Lexington Avenue, and I had this sign in my windshield, so I wouldn't be stoned, uh, I was spat upon by some of the people who lived in the Mohegan colony especially. Prior to the concert, it was the veterans organizations, as I mentioned before, the American Legion, the VFW, the Jewish War Veterans, and, and other groups that were going to demonstrate, and they organized to demonstrate as a counter demonstration against Robeson and his followers. Uh, there was no indication whatsoever of a Klan involvement, strictly veterans organizations. I think perhaps Robeson's people would have, would, would have liked to have heard that, yes, it was a Klan involvement, and that would justify their violence. But that was not so. The people marching as a counter demonstration were all Americans and ex-GIs for the most part. Wake up, America. Peekskill incident. Leaders of veteran organizations of the Peekskill area have taken a firm stand in their decision to protest the reappearance of Paul Robeson tomorrow afternoon by staging a demonstration parade which, at this moment, gives every indication of turning into one of the largest assemblies in the history of Peekskill. While there is a possibility that a last-minute decree by Governor Thomas E. Dewey in the interest of public safety might call off either or both demonstrations, both the Robesonites and the veterans are proceeding with their plans and the law enforcement authorities are marshalling forces to cope with what in all probability will be a rally and counter rally of very considerable dimensions and significance. We commend last night's organizing group for the rigid insistence with which they charged the leaders of all participating veteran organizations to assume absolute and complete responsibility for the peaceful and orderly behavior of their ranks. We are also happy to see that police authorities are making what appears to be adequate provisions for any eventuality. We are still wholeheartedly in support of all who feel it their patriotic duty to protest in a legal and peaceful way against the alien ideology of Paul Robeson and his political followers. The issue is clear and real and is pungently expressed in the posters appearing around town. Wake up, America. Peekskill did. There was an organized security force, mostly of veterans, predominantly from two unions in New York City, the Fur Workers and District 65 distributed, distributed Workers, some from the National Maritime Union and others, of about 6,000, 5 to 6,000, uh, who provided uh, security on the access roads, um, security in the large concert area, which was a former golf course, big area of several acres, and a human wall, uh, sort of arm to arm, of 2,000 who formed a human barrier around the entire perimeter, just a solid line. So, with, and they were, that is, this force was organized by former veterans, uh, former officers in World War II who had combat service, so there was a command post and field radios and you know, a medical post and water and food. I mean, there was everything organized as if it were 
a military campaign without guns, with enormous discipline and, and people who came from elsewhere were integrated into the force there to relieve some of the guys who had been there since early morning. We came at about 10 in the morning. They got there at 5.30, 6 o'clock to secure the area and so on. Um, so it was quite a, it was quite an experience, you know, to come in and see these thousands of guys, they're yours, you don't know what you're going to be coming into. And you see, oh, these are our guys, they all have the District 65 hats and the furious hats, some of them had, some of them had American Legion hats, far, veterans of foreign wars, but there are foreign Legion and foreign wars guys, so that, uh, it's interesting, it wasn't that all the veterans groups were of, of the mind of the right-wingers and the mob, not true at all. So the men you see in the pictures behind my father, standing on the platform, which was right under a tree, but right in the line of fire of any snipers, there were 14 men, uh, about 12 to 14, who volunteered to put their bodies between my father and the sniper's bullet. So that's what they were standing there about. They so were I'm, great men. Yeah, well, one, one, not only that, what was extraordinary is that the first, the, so many wanted to volunteer, there was almost a fight among them for the privilege, so they had to draw straws. And the first man to draw a short straw sat down and cried, so it was quite, uh, and by the way, he happened to be white and Jewish. I didn't go to concert in 49. I came by there because I, I heard of the rippling effect of what was going on, so I drove out. What did you see? I saw all these guys gathering up on the side of the road, on both sides of the road, near what's now called Jameson's Place. And uh, uh, I looked at them, and uh, half of them waved at me. I think probably a third were my clients one time or another. And I just drove by and uh, turned on the Mill Street. He came on back home. Came home and I found a trooper sitting in my house. Mr. Hess, and he said, uh, Ben, I thought I'd come over here and sit around in case you had any trouble at your house over here. There was a, somewhat of an anti-Semitic overtone to it because many of these people who came up the city were Jewish. There were also many belligerent Italians and aggressive uh, other people who had uh, their own point of view, who do not uh, fall in the fold, and some blacks. And so he sat on a porch there. He was about six foot two, with two guns at his side. My wife and he sat on a porch. And I said, I got no problem here. Nobody's going to bother me. I hung around for about an hour, went away. And I didn't have any problem. George Finelli was a district attorney who was very uh, supportive of the protection for the people, the right to people to assemble, and they should not be molested by these uh, rowdy element and the troopers were called in, the sheriff's officers were called in. They were all called in solely to protect the right of these people to assemble and to have a concert, which was being flayed and, ass and assaulted by these uh, people who were feeling that this was an alien type of thing that we should uh, squelch. Did the police do a pretty good job? Excellent job. I am Joe DeBarry. Uh, I've been in Peekskill 27 years, and 41 years ago I came, I went to Scranton from uh, from Italy. We went, I went out there Saturday night. I was parading with the gang. I was way ahead of it, way ahead of the parade. Yes, I was, because I don't like to see a people come over and ruin this town. But this town is clean town, and besides that, the country is good country. If they ever live on the other side themselves, they know what it is go without bread, because because they had it. And now they, they got it what they want over here, they still they got to make trouble for us people. May God help them when they come over here again. Uh, state police who demanded access to the area and wanted to patrol the area, but were actually on the other side, the commander of the defense force um, said, we, the committee has rented the place you have to leave. And in fact, by law, they did have to. So he forced them to withdraw. So they withdrew, and um, the local defense force patrolled the woods behind the concert, immediate concert area, and the hills surrounding. And um, how should I put it? Cleared those areas. Was there a sniper nest? Two. Uh, one, they overpowered. 
I think three guys broke two rifles and chased them off. They didn't, well, they, well, they roughed them up a bit, but didn't really beat them up. They had guns and they were? Telescopic sights, rifles. There's an old man called Mississippi. That's the old man that I'd like to be. What does he care if the world's got troubles? What does he care if the land ain't free? We heard the concert, and there was nothing to rouse the ire of any um, bigots or anyone else because it was purely a concert. There was no political ising. <clears throat> and um, Paul was in good voice, and everyone was very enthusiastic and, and cheered. When it was over, of course, it took a long time. The, the, the arena was jammed. There were thousands of people. And so it took time for the cars to get out. And as we got out, we were warned before, put up your windows. And the police had formed a, almost like a tunnel that you had to go through. And we had to go right, and we had to go through the gauntlet, uh, where on both sides of the road, there were the same people who have people in quotation marks who had been throwing epithets and ugly faces at us when we came in they now substituted that at least the um, ugly faces or the epithets with rocks and the rocks kept kept coming straight at us and actually I was full of admiration for the driver of our car because the windshield cracked into a million pieces, but it didn't shatter. And he just kept driving straight. And you know, you never know what, how you're going to react in a situation of stress until it happens to you. Instead of being afraid, I was furious. And I felt myself getting up from the back seat and, and uh, shaking my fists and, sh and shouting back. I, I know that I was living with it very, very actively for a long time afterwards. And um, it was really very, very uh, shaky, uh, uh, emotional uh, reaction to think that a thing like that could happen here. Something, but don't say nothing. He just keeps rolling. He keeps on rolling along. <laughs> Believe it or not, all this happened in America this afternoon in the most beautiful countryside you can imagine, right up the Hudson, not very far from New York City. Suggestion. Well, 
they made the suggestion that the Negroes get on the buses uh, and they were going to get out. So just as uh, I was starting out of the line, along with many others, uh, the cop says, uh, come on, can't you walk faster? So uh, we began to move on a bit faster. He says, uh, what, why the hell don't you black son of a bitches go back to Russia where you came from? So uh, we looked around at the guy and says, uh, we are Americans. And this is what I said. We are Americans, and as a result of being Americans, we have a right to come any place we want to and listen to anything, anybody we want to. So at this point, the cop says, uh, shut up, you black son of a bitch, and get on that bus. And at that time, he socked me in my mouth. And a lot of the guys around us, they booed the cops, and as a result of booing the cops, the cops came over with their sticks and began to club the guys on the line. Every hour on the hour, the New York Times brings you the latest news bulletins. Governor Dewey has ordered a grand jury investigation of the disturbances which followed two recent Paul Robeson concerts near Peekskill. After a four and a half hour talk with Westchester District Attorney Fanelli and Sherry Fred Roscoe, Dewey told reporters that the incidents were a disgrace. He charged that Robeson's communist followers had provoked the disorder. The governor added that the investigation will seek to determine whether the violence was the result of planning and whether the meeting itself was calculated to incite disorder. He said the inquiry would be complete and impartial. We will keep on fighting, and we will win. We will win as did our forefathers who fought with Jefferson and Lincoln, and as you veterans who stood by Roosevelt's side. And we can be proud that we stand on guard for our true democratic tradition. The attack on people's artists and their audience is not only an attack on culture, it's an attack on the civil rights and freedom of every American in the land. Together, we will fight to bring law and order to New York State and to prosecute and punish the guilty. These Klan-inspired and police-condoned hoodlums cannot stop the song of freedom in America. We're going on singing and presenting our concerts in every corner of America. Let's fight together. I'm Mrs. Warren Trim. I live approximately a quarter of a mile from the scene of the last riot. I hope that we never have another one. I have three small children, and it isn't anything for children to witness. Well, I was very unhappy in those days because I felt that I was ostracized um, for being the daughter of a politically left person, uh, parents, and uh, you know I was, and I didn't understand it, and I, and there was anger. The people that I w went to school with were angry. You know, communists were terrible, and um, and I was one of them, not even understanding what one was. Um, so I, the anger of the times was very traumatic for me, and so, mm -hmm. so I can see, I can, I, I can see the anger of that Peekskill riot and the pe people coming, and they were angry and they were threatened by these people who were coming to sing, you know, and that was all mixed in with the racism and <laughs> all of the other stuff that was in there. But people were riled up. The lessons that we can use today that were taught to us by the Peekskill riot were that uh, there are sections of the private sector for their own uh, self-interest, sections of the public sector for their own self-interest, who would spread uh, bigotry, hatred, uh, create a climate where People are divided against each other. <coughs> Today we have the criminalization of the poor, we have uh, death rows, we have police brutality. We have an exploitation of fear. The same exact identical situation and climate that was created in 1949 uh, during the Peekskill riots. Could you shake hands with some of those men who were throwing rocks at the perimeter today? I don't think so. No? No. Well, you've got to remember things. I think it's worthwhile 
remembering the good and bad in this life. Uh, matter of fact, if you don't, I think you're in a bad way. Uh, my weakness is, I suppose, I tend to forget the bad things and just want to remember the good things. There were a lot of men that night uh, holding the line around that concert. Well, there was a song written about it. I helped. Lee Hayes did most of the song, but I and the rest of the weavers helped with the song. I think we pared down his seven verses to five verses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a story of a line that was held and many brave men and women whose courage we know well. How they held the line at Peekskill on that long September day. We'll hold the line forever till the peoples have their way. Hold the line. Hold the line. I, my voice is about 90% gone, as you hear. I'm mainly a song leader now. I shout out the words and the audience does the singing. What caused Peekskill is still with us because we haven't solved any of the problems that caused Peekskill in people's minds and people's habits and the way they relate to one another. So maybe we need to address who we are, what we are, what kind of constitution we want, what kind of country are we, what kind of people are we, very basic, before it's too late. That, that it's more than just patching some edges or reforming some bits and pieces or having political campaign reform or something. Maybe we have to look at our sick society and really talk about fixing it in a major way. And begin, it, it, the first thing is to talk about, well, is it sick? And if it is, well, what do we do about it? What's the disease? That's a useful... It's a useful starting point. Starting point. The country now is run economically for the benefit of the top 20% of the population. People with incomes over $55,000 a year per household. To be exact, I mean, that's in the New York Times. It's not something that I invented. Everybody knows that. It's called the growing income gap or whatever. You see articles everywhere. What are we going to do? So the interests of the other 80% of the population, from $55,000 a year per household down, are not only being ignored, they're being trampled upon. Well, you can't have a country run for the benefit of 20 against the interests of the 80. Ultimately, the 80 will demolish the 20. It's not a race war, it's a class war, the worst kind. I sing in Peekskill almost every summer now. They have a little festival on the waterfront, and I'm invited to go down and sing a few songs. About five years ago, uh, I was signing autographs. A 14 or 15 year old boy uh, had a piece of paper and while I was signing, I said, where do you live? He said, oh, I've lived in Peekskill, my family always have. I looked at his father, I said, gee, you must have been here in 49. Kind of sheepish smile went over his face. He said, yeah, I'm afraid I was one of the bad guys. All of us, at some time, have made terrible mistakes often because we've been told things which we thought were true, which were not true. I don't like to use the word crime. Uh, people say, well, there are such things as crimes, aren't there? I suppose there are. But I think even the most obvious crimes and mistakes of how we've been raised, the situation we find ourselves in, I'm against capital punishment myself. And I'm in favor of communication between people, even if we absolutely despise each other's words. Ha! <laughs> I laugh about words. Uh, if the world uh, survives, it'll be because we uh, don't get caught in a lingocentric predicament. <laughs> we never recovered ideologically from the witch hunt days of McCarthy. The procedure is gone, but the mindset is, in subtle ways, still there. But there's no evil empire left and no communists to fight, so you've got to find somebody else. So who are we fighting? Mm -hmm. Pogo said it best. We found the enemy, and it's us.
shoulder If we stand together We can make a difference in this world Shoulder to shoulder We must act together Working for the future of this world The system thrives on our division While we fight it makes decisions Fighting helps to keep us all in chains We ought to show respect for each other Work together, sister, brother Using all our arms, our hearts, our brains Shoulder to shoulder stand together, we can make a difference in this world. Shoulder to shoulder, we must act together, working for the future of this world.